Hi, I'm Ellie, and this is your weekly theatre news recap. The show where I catch you up on all of the theatre news from across the UK and in West End theatre. This is going to be a special lo-fi edition of this series, mainly because uh, my laptop broke. My laptop just decided to break at the most inconvenient time. But if there is any series that I can do without editing the video at all, I'm sure I can get through this one. Maybe, maybe not. You are about to see why I edit my videos, but I didn't want to miss out on a week of theatre news. I didn't want to get too behind on the series. Uh, so I'm doing this, and hopefully soon I will either have a lap my laptop back, or I will make this old one work well enough to be able to edit. It's so slow. It is so unbelievably slow. I will say a lot of lovely people have reached out to me and asked me if there's a way to support me and help with <laughs> my favourite person saying it was uh, the, the laptop fund. <laughs> and... Uh, I will leave a donor link if you want to do like a one-off donation to help me out uh, in the description down below. But there is absolutely no pressure to do this. Uh, we're in a cost, cost of living crisis, babes, you know. She understands. Uh, but looking at how expensive it may be to fix this, I should probably say that. <laughs> but let's get into this week's casting news and all of the West End news that has come out this week. Yes, and and you will be able to very quickly see why I edit my videos. First off, we're going to head to the Old Vic. Now, every year, for the past, I think it's about eight years, we have seen the same production of A Christmas Carol return to the Old Vic. Um, look, A Christmas Carol at Christmas, you know, it's not groundbreaking. It's like florals for spring, you know. But what has been really exciting is that every year we've seen a very cool star take the stage as Scrooge. And this year, they have cast Doctor Who star Christopher Eccleston. Now, I am a massive Christopher Eccleston stan. I'm a massive Doctor Who fan. I literally have his sonic screwdriver up over there. Like, I am, I am a stan. I love Doctor Who. I'm a massive Doctor Who fan. So if there was any way you are going to get me to watch a version of A Christmas Carol, it's casting Christopher Eccleston. I mean, I mean, an icon. So perfect for the role of Scrooge. I think he has that kind of vibe that is going to work really well in that role. That, like, that little bit of grumpiness that, you know, he even had that a little bit as a doctor when, you know, that, that sternness that he had. I can, I can picture it immediately. It is such fantastic casting, and I am going to be there. I am going to be there. Moving on, we've got some Panto news as well. So Peter Pan is the uh, next Panto that's heading to the London Palladium, and we've seen a bunch of the cast members come out, including icon legend The Moment, Robin Badge as Tinkerbell, and a couple of other big names. But we now know who is going to be playing Wendy and Peter Pan. Star of Bonnie and Clyde, Frances Mailer McCann is going to be playing Wendy, and Lewis Gunt is going to be playing Peter Pan. Now, when you cast Rob Madge and Frances Mailer McCann in a show together, I am there. I am there. I'm there. I'm there. You, you, you've got me like that. You, you have got me on the hook. I am here. I am there. I am here, there, everywhere. I am going. I wish that I could edit this video, but I guess this is staying in. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Anyway, great casting news. I love that. <laughs> great casting. Uh, we also have the full West End cast announced uh, for a couple of uh, different West End shows and touring casting. Now, these are a lot of names. Normally, I would put them on screen, but I can't do that. So instead, I'm going to put uh, all of these names into the description down below. But we have the full cast for Hamnet, which is going to the Garrick. I think it opens in around October, November, uh, which is very exciting. It's a straight transfer from uh, the Royal Shakespeare Theatre in Stratford-upon-Haven. And... Haven? Avon. Haven, Avon. Stratford-upon-Avon. <laughs> And, yeah, this has already broken records for, like, 
fastest selling show uh, at the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. And look, if that hype is building up, you know, I've got to try and go see it. We also have uh, a lot of touring casting news uh, from Calendar Girls. So we have the cast of Calendar Girls here, which is Tanya Franks, Maureen Nolan, Lynn Paul, Amy Robbins, Paula Tapaden, Marty Webb, and Honeysuckle Weeks. Going on to other shows that will get a lot of uh, that older female uh, crowd in, we have the casting for Full Monty as well. <laughs> Uh, which I will link down in the description below, but includes names like Danny Hatchard and Jake Quickenham, uh, as well as Bill Ward and Neil Hurst. Oh, keeping on with the casting news. Wow, they really want to test me with names. We also have the full cast for uh, Darren Brown's Unbelievable. So Darren Brown is a very famous magician and he has assembled a West End show that he will not be participating in, but he is kind of pulling the strings off behind the scenes. This is being tested and like run out of town at the Mercury Theatre Colchester, which is a very local theatre to me. One, a theatre that is near and dear to my heart and I love visiting. Uh, in this cast, which I will link fully down below, we have a couple of names that you might recognise, like Hammer Price from Kinky Boots and Simon Lipkin, who has recently starred in Elf. A very exciting cast and very interesting, this blend of musicians and magicians and actors. It's going to be quite an interesting show and very different to any other Darren Brown show that's happened before. And finally, in our like main casting news this week, we have the three leads announced for the upcoming UK tour of Jesus Christ Superstar. This is the same version that played at the Barbican and originated at the Regent Park Open Air Theatre a couple of years ago, also returned to there during the pandemic, and we now have our lead casting. So we have Shem Omari James as Judas, Hannah Richardson as Mary, and Ian McIntosh as Jesus. Now, uh, Ian McIntosh, uh, you may recognise very recently, from being in We Will Rock You. Uh, they are currently Galileo in the big London Coliseum version of the show. And honestly, I'm really excited for this production. I think that this is going to be great. I have not yet caught this version of Jesus Christ Superstar. And look, if you look at my channel, <laughs> there would be an assumption that I am not a massive Angelo Webber fan. I like some Andrew Lebeau musicals, one of these being Jesus Christ Superstar, and the other one being one that I'm about to mention in a moment. So I'm very excited to see this tour play out, I'm hoping to catch it whenever it comes near me, and um, yeah, I'm doing surprisingly well for a video that I'm not editing. I am very surprised with myself at how I'm keeping this going and keeping the talking of flowing, and yeah, maybe I can get away with not editing my videos. Don't say that, Ellie. Don't, don't say that. Don't, you need to edit. <laughs> uh, also talking of casting, but we're actually diving more into concerts. Uh, wow, great. Uh, I was just talking about how well I was doing, not to stumble and stutter over my words. We have the completed cast for the Avita concert, which will be playing at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. Yes, yes. Uh, on the 31st of July, and now twice on the 1st of August, as they've added a extra matinee. Um, revealed this week, we have Jeremy Sakum, who will be playing the role of Peron, Nathan Amanzi, who is, uh, I caught in the original cast of, I think it was original, or at least the original West End cast, of Heathers. Uh, as the dad, he's going to play McGowdy. Great casting right there. And we now know who's playing the mistress, which will be Emily Lane, who is currently Anna in Frozen. I actually caught her in Frozen the other week, and I absolutely loved her as Anna. I'm very interested to see her take on the role of mistress, a very different role for her. Okay, I allowed myself one edit, because I, I really badly stumbled. But this cast is fantastic. I really think that all of these names very interesting to play these roles. Uh, these are like, these are, what I will say is that sometimes with like, 
concerts, you often see casting names where you these actors would probably never get the chance to like sit down and play these roles. I could see a lot of these people playing these roles in like a fully fledged staging of Evita, but either way, I'm excited to see this. I think all of these people are really suited to their roles, and yeah. Talking of uh, concert casting as well, we have the full cast of the In Clay concert. We know that Danielle Steers, Alex Young, and Roshani Abbey will be sharing the role of Marie Berth Kazin. I don't know if I said that right. I am hoping so. This will be playing at the Other Palace on the 21st of August, and it is very exciting. I've heard a lot of good things about the show. It's still in development. They're still touring around with it. It had a lot of rave reviews from the Vaults Festival. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. Uh, next up, we're going to talk very quickly about some extensions and some closures to some shows. We learned that Bleak Expectations will unfortunately be closing early in the West End. Their closing date has been moved up to the 13th of August instead of the 3rd of September, which they originally were going to play to. This is very unfortunate. Um, it's very sad news when the show has to close early, especially a show that only had quite a short run at the Criterion, like Bleak Expectations. But, unfortunately, this happened, and there still is a little bit of time to go catch the show, if you would like to go see it. The other thing we learned that is closing is Punt Drunk's Burnt City. They will be closing this on the 24th of September, 2023, and they will be announcing what their next production will be uh, in their base. This is, um, Punch Drunk have this, uh, base that they use in Woolwich, uh, which they use for all their shows, including, uh, Burnt City. Uh, but they have interestingly said that their next show will not be another mask show. It's going to be something a little bit different. So we're just gonna have to wait and see what Punch Drunk are cooking up for us next. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire has announced a Western extension after opening this week. I know you guys are begging to know my thoughts on the show. Uh, you're gonna have to wait until I can properly edit things. Um, but they've extended for a full year. I don't think this is surprising. I think that no matter what, this show would have had a, a decent year's run, uh, whether it got positives or negative reviews. And it'll be running currently, booking up until June 2024. And finally, in not White West End news, a bit more cinema, but I've chucked it in here anyway. We have the release dates for the Wicked films. Uh, these have been slightly moved up. Um, thankfully, a lot of Wicked fans will be cheering. Uh, the first film will be coming out on November 27th, 2024, and the second film on November 26th, 2025. It's still a long wait, let's be perfectly honest, but they're still in production. This is to be expected, and, you know... With these type of films, like a musical film, it's very hard to get right. I'd rather they take their time to make sure everything is perfect on it, instead of rushing it out and it being an absolute mess. Do I have absolutely anything else? Okay, we've got two more pieces of news. Yay! <laughs> we have a solo production of The Picture of Dorian Gray, or Portrait? Portrait of Dorian Gray. It, portrait, yes. This would be something I would normally edit out. <laughs> but no, I just look silly now. <laughs> we have a one-person version of Picture of... I did it again. Portrait of Dorian Gray heading to the Theatre Royal Haymarket in January 2024, starring Succession's Sarah Nook uh, in an adaptation by Kip Williams. This is very exciting. I love that we're starting to see the Theatre Royal Haymarket bring in these... Uh, smaller shows again. I love when we can see more like interesting plays or big names in theatre getting their West End debuts or another run in a West End theatre. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about Succession, but I'm sure Sarah Schnook is great. Schnook is a fun name to say. And yes, and finally, in news this week, I'm free. Uh, we have the announcement of the of a doorbell. We have an announcement of an officer and a gentleman, the musical version of the film, returning for a UK tour. There's going to be so much loud noise right now of opening doors, you can probably hear. But anyway, 
Uh, this UK tour will be uh, the same production that played at the Curve Leicester a couple of years ago. It's a jukebox musical with songs by Madonna, Blondie, Bon Jovi, Cyndi Lauper. So very 80s inspired, very 80s style. And we'll be stopping at all of these locations. Let's see if I can do it in one take. Probably not. Let's go. Birmingham, Glasgow, Belfast, Luandidau. I still can't say that one. Bradford, Wimbledon, Cardiff, Brighton, Manchester, Stoke, Newcastle, Oxford, York, Sheffield, Southampton, Torquay. Is that Torquay or Torquay? Probably Torquay. Anyway, uh, Canterbury, Southend, Liverpool, Nottingham, Woking, Leicester, Cornwall, Bristol, Ipswich, Eastbourne, Wolverhampton, Blackpool, Aberdeen, Milton Keynes, Bromley, Hull and Carlisle. <sighs> so if you're near any of those places, put your tickets for Officer and a Gentleman. But that is all the theatre news for this week. This was the most chaotic video I have ever done. Jesus, I am... Wow. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribing. I'm, I'm hoping that videos will be able to come back very soon, but I'm kind of waiting in the dark a little bit to find out what is happening with that. Uh, enjoy video, more videos on screen right now. But that's it for me today, and I hope to see you next time. Bye! <laughs> God. <laughs> I want my laptop back.